right, so we are here. It is Thursday, right? Uh, mm -hmm. The 14th, thank you. I'm going to adjust a little bit more here. So let yourself sit comfortably. Uh, if you're at home, if you want to sit in a chair, fine. If you'd rather sit on the floor, and if you need blankets underneath, you do. Sit up higher if you need, and cross your legs if you'd rather, or let your legs stretch out. Uh-oh, I forgot something. <laughs> we need straps. Okay, now, if you don't mind me touching you. I don't mind. You've been in here watching things going on. I've been so much hand sanitizer. I've been walking in the studio. have a strap or a belt or whatever you use you can even use you know something like a towel to do stretches actually so get what you need and again let yourself sit comfortably if somebody's out there let me know maybe if you can if you can hear me but I think everything looks okay so again get comfortable close your eyes and actually see if you can let your hands kind of shake out a little bit and then bring your hands in your lap, turn your palms up, and cup one hand on top of the other. So your palms are, are just easily facing up. Relax your shoulders down. Try not to round forward in your shoulders, but lengthen up through the top of your head. And then just accept your breaths in and out through your nose. If you can let your breaths lengthen out, feeling the breath coming into the belly, into the ribs, up into your chest. Now very easy just let your other hand come on top so your hands are still cupped you still have your palms up but you can just release to the other side just let your hands come on out beside you take a nice inhale and on the exhale let's twist to our right letting yourself easily come around don't force it just let the back do the twisting here let your hands rest where it's comfortable and one more inhale and on the exhale we'll bring ourselves back around and all the way into the other direction. And again, just really be soft with where your hands go, not forcing your twist, just waking up the spine gently here. Feel length in the back of your neck and throat. Good, one more inhale. And on the exhale, Return back into center again, letting the arms come out beside you. And we'll inhale both arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, let our hands come down together in front of our hearts. And then we'll reverse and inhale the hands right up through the midline. And on the exhale, open the arms on back out and down. And now let's bring our hands right together in front of our hearts. Take a nice inhale. And when you exhale, tilt your head to the left. Let your hands just slide over a little to the right, kind of in front of your right shoulder. And then coming on back up to the top with the head, hands back to center, and we'll go the other way, tilting the right ear, ear towards the right shoulder. Hands go a little to the left. And then we'll come on back into center again. Lift your elbows up a little bit, really feel your wrists here 
Feel the fingers connecting a little more firmly in your palms. And then let your elbows soften down. We're going to unfold our arms on down beside us. Before we switch legs, just leave your legs stretched out for a second and flex and point through your feet a little bit. So if you're cross-legged, when you come back, you're going to go to the other side. Circle a little bit through your feet too, maybe. <clears throat> and then when you're ready, whether you come back to long legs or feet on the floor if you're in your chair or switch the cross of your legs, and then bringing your arms on out beside you again here now. And let's inhale the arms straight out from the shoulders and rotate our palms up. And then when you exhale, bend your elbows and let your fingertips come to rest on the tops of your shoulders. Now, let your elbows be kind of soft. Try not to tense up too much here. And now as you inhale, let yourself do a little twist to the left. And when you exhale, let yourself twist back towards the right. Now these are not very deep twists. Inhale your way a little bit to the left and exhale your way to the other side. And keep going with your own breath. Inhaling when you twist a little to the left. Exhaling when you come back to the right. Now you can do little shallow breaths quickly or you can let yourself go really slow. In and out through your nose. And then finish back at center. We're going to unfold our arms on down beside us. And let's inhale the right arm all the way out and up overhead. Bend your elbow. Let yourself just feel the hand come down wherever feels good for your shoulder. And then bring the hand on back up. We're going to come into a little side stretch. Left hand can be beside you on the floor to give you support. You can hold your chair. You can put your hand in your lap. One more breath. And then we're going to come back up. Bring the right arm down as the left arm comes up. And then bend your left elbow. And again, you know, we're all different. Where that hand comes, totally up to you. Just wake up here into the shoulder. Feel the tricep. Get a nice stretch there. And then in to that nice long arm again, and again, coming into your side stretch. Again, that right hand can give you a little support, however you need. Breathing into between the ribs, really, on that left side. Think about the spaces between your ribs when you inhale. And then we'll come on back up and lower our arms on down beside us. Let's bring our arms forward and then turn your palms away from each other. Send the backs of your hands towards each other for a second. And now bring your hands down. We're going to start to circle, keeping our hands together, circling through our wrists. So just lightly keeping your hands connected. You're not forcing, you're not pushing into the hands. Just feeling the wrists rotate here, letting yourself enjoy. Imagine waking up the hands, the wrists, the arms even. We're going to stop in reverse direction. So when you're ready, just let yourself go the other way. Again, just keeping gently connected as much as you can through the hands and the backs of the hands. Good. And then finish off. Let yourself end with your hands back into prayer hands here in front of your chest, in front of your heart. And then we'll release our hands on down. Shake out just a little bit here. We're coming forward on towards our hands and knees. So if you know you don't want to be on your knees, don't. Put your blanket underneath your knees if you'd rather not be on the floor if it feels too hard. Or be up with your hands up in the seat of your chair so that you're not down on your knees at all, but you're standing. So take your time. Shift your hips a little bit side to side. Just let yourself easily... Allow your head to respond however you want. So when your sh hips shift one way, let your head do what it wants, right? Try not to be tense up in your neck. And then come on back in to feeling very centered. Look down between your hands. Make sure your hands are pretty equal here. Inhale. And on the exhale, draw your navel towards your spine. Round up into that cat pose. Press gently, if you're on the floor, into the tops of your toes. And on your next inhale, send your tailbone back and up and move your way back through either to neutral spine or coming through for cow. Is 
that feels okay for you. So the exhale draws the tailbone up under and belly draws towards the spine. Let yourself come into your cat. And on the inhale, move your way back through your spine. Start to move with your own tempo here, your own timing, your own breath. And finish the one that you're on or that you're moving into. And we'll come into more neutral spine here now. So if you're on the floor, send your right foot back and let yourself just stretch out the back of your right leg with your toes curled under. Same thing if you're on the chair, just a little mini lunge really if you're in your chair. Waking up the back of that right leg. And then we'll bring that right knee down and we're gonna go to the left. So send the left foot back. Wake up through the back of the leg there now. Feel as equal as you can between your hands and engage your low belly. Good, and then come on back down. We're gonna step our left foot forward and find lunge here. So you know, grab whatever support you need. So if you've got your blocks, remember you have those three heights. You can pick the height you wanna be. You can go up higher to the chair if you want. You can also go down to the floor if you want, right? So just be mindful, take your time, feel your feet in the floor, draw your shoulders down away from your ears. Good, and we're gonna switch legs. So however you want to do that, stepping forward or stepping back, adjusting your stance, the length you wanna be there, make sure that front knee is bent no farther forward than your ankle. And then enjoy, releasing into that length now. Find your whole body here in your lunge. Good, and we are gonna switch legs again to the other side. So again, getting the length of stance. Remember you want your feet a little bit apart like you're on very narrow railroad tracks so that you get easier up into your hips. If you want to float your left hand up off the chair or the block, or forearm even to your thigh, you can. And then we're going to come on back down with the hands. If they're up, we're going to switch and go to the other side. So again, once you really feel that lunge happening here, if you feel balanced enough to bring that right hand or forearm to your thigh, you can, or both. If you want to bring both up, you can bring both. Or keep both hands down. And then coming on back with the hands down, we'll step forward and come on into standing forward bend. Feet, hips distance apart and parallel. Use whatever support you need, and you know that. Feel comfortable in your back. Knees can be as bent as you need. Give the backs of your legs time to open up here. If you're able to let your head hang, do so that you feel very released in your neck. And let the weight of the head help you really find more space in your spine. And then come into those full deep breaths. Accepting your breaths in and out. Feeling the ribs expand in all directions when you inhale. One more breath. And then we'll bring our hands to our hips. We're gonna bend our knees and rise on up to standing and inhale our arms all the way out and up overhead. And let our exhale bring our hands down together in front of our hearts. So adjust however you need to find your mountain pose. If you need to shift around a little bit, by all means do. Get your feet where you feel very solidly based through your feet equally. Hands coming to the heart. Feeling the fingers spread nice and wide, bringing your gaze on out. Whether your eyes are open or closed, just imagine you're looking straight out. So if you were in a big empty field, a big flat one, right? You can look right on out to where the horizon would be and feel the sense of space all around you.
unfold our arms right on down beside us. And inhale both arms all the way out and up overhead. A wide V. Turn your pinkies towards each other. Let your shoulders melt down here. You can be as wide as you want. That's how your shoulders feel that determines that. Now, if you want to look up, you can a little bit or a lot. When you inhale, if it feels good to look up, do. And on the exhale, we'll bend the knees and come on forward into our standing forward bend. And let your next inhale help you find a nice flat back. Whether your hands want to shift up to your shins or to the blocks or your chair or your thighs. And then we'll step the right foot back and come into lunge. And inhale. Exhale into a downward facing dog pose. Your choice, whether you come into dog with your hands on the floor or the blocks or the chair. Hug your elbows in a little bit towards each other. Go ahead and walk your dog so that you bend one knee at a time and see if you can make it a kind of a slow walk. So you give the leg that's long and the heel that's coming towards the floor down time, time to adjust, right? So you're not just running your way through. And then we'll finish off. We're going to come on out towards that plank. And again, you know plank pose, different for everybody. If your hands are on the floor and you need to put your knees down, do. Or if you want to come down to your forearms to get out of the wrists, do that. So nice core strength there. One more breath. And then we'll come on back into down dog. So again, you know, if you need to adjust your feet between your down dog and your plank, do. And then we'll bring our right foot forward to come into lunge. And if the left knee needs to come down in order for you to get that forward there, do it. And then we'll come on back into our standing forward bend. Feet hips distance apart, parallel. Again, support if you need, or if it feels good to you to hang or hold your own elbows, go for it. Now soft face, so if you find a little bit of tension in, around your mouth or your eyes, see if you can just really consciously focus on letting go. And sometimes gravity helps with that. One more breath. And then we'll bring our hands to our hips, bend our knees, press into our feet. We're going to come on up to standing and we'll inhale our arms all the way out and up. And on our exhale, let our hands come down together in front of our hearts. Let's inhale the hands right up through the midline. See if you can keep your hands together. Clasp your hands, send your pointer finger up and then bend your elbows a little bit and let them reach up a little bit higher. Now, don't tuck your tailbone forward. Still feel your tailbone reaching down towards between your heels. Hug your elbows inward a little bit, like you're trying to hold something between your elbows. One more inhale. And on the exhale, come into longer arms, separate your hands, and let yourself come into that wide V that we were in before, or that Y, that letter Y. Arms overhead, mountain. Inhale here. And on the exhale, bend your knees and come on forward into your standing forward bend. And let your next inhale help you find that flat, long back, back of your head in line with your spine. Press your feet away from each other like you're trying to make your mat wider with your feet. And then we'll step the left foot back and come into lunge. And inhale. Exhale into your downward facing dog pose again. So hopefully feels a little bit better now. Take your time if you need to walk or bend your knees doing your dog. Move around however you need. And on your next inhale, come on out towards that plank. And again, you adjust the plank however you need. You can do little push-ups if you want to bend your elbows a little bit. You don't have to go all the way into a full push-up to get a lot happening there in your biceps, in your shoulders. And then we'll come on back into downward facing dog pose. Let's bring our left foot forward. Again, how you get your foot into that lunge forward is up to you. Draw your shoulders away from your ears. And let's step all the way back into standing forward bend. Go right to your breasts. 
Let your hands kind of do whatever they want. You support if you need or put your hands in a place that feels good for you. And then following your breaths now, in and out. Again, feeling the ribs expand as you inhale. And imagine really, if you can, on your exhales, that the top of the head just wants to release closer to the floor. That doesn't mean it will do that, but just that idea of on your exhales, the crown of the head just getting closer to the ground. And then we'll bring our hands back on up to our hips and bend our knees and come up to standing and inhale our arms all the way out and up. And on our exhale, bring our hands down together in front of our hearts. We're going to unfold our arms down beside us and inhale the arms all the way out and up. And on the exhale, coming forward into standing forward bend. On your next inhale, find that nice, long, flat, tabletop back. And we're going to walk into down dog from here. So your choice, again, where your hands are, you know that. And let your next inhale bring you out towards that plank. Whether you do a back bend here or not, it's totally up to you. You can come to your forearms and do sphinx. You can come through for a little cobra or come through for an up dog or no back bend at all. And then we'll come on back again into down dog. So ease your way there. Adjust. And then we're gonna do that same thing. Inhale on out towards that plank. And again, whether you do a back bend or not, totally up to you. And you can stay in plank, remember. And then we'll make our way back again into down dog. And this time let's bring our left foot forward and come into lunge, however you need to get there. And then we'll come on back again into standing forward bend. And go right to those breaths. Again, feel the ribs expanding. Actually see if for a couple of breaths you can focus on breathing into your side ribs. So like if you had gills, like a fish, right? Feel like you're breathing sideways, which is a different feeling than focusing all around or front or back. So it's like you're widening your rib cage with your breath. Good. And now bend your knees slightly, press into your feet. Imagine you're trying to widen your mat with your feet. Bring your hands up to your hips. Keep pressing your feet away from each other gently as you rise on up to standing. And we'll inhale the arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, let our hands come right down. As your hands come down, reach up through the top of your head. Feel that lightness in your head as you're grounded equally through your feet. And then as you come into mountain pose, feeling the hips coming over the ankles, the shoulders over the hips. Feel the tailbone just reaching down towards between your heels. So once you have your pelvis aligned, everything wants to go into alignment in the body. Good, we'll go ahead and release our arms on down beside us and shake out whatever you need to move around however you need. If you're using your chair, you might wanna turn it around the other way and have your blocks handy. So if you need them, you have them. We're gonna step our right foot back and come into warrior two. So remember, how long a stance? And I was kind of playing with this today, you know. Sometimes varying how long your stance is really changes where you feel the pose. So if you're used to doing a fairly long stance with three or more feet between your heels, if you shorten it, sometimes you go, oh, wow, this feels really different, right? Or if you're used to having like two feet between your feet and you try to go a little six inches more or something, that might make it feel different too. So. Take, take your time, maybe go a little bit different distance than you usually are with your feet. Bend your front knee. Take your time here now. Start to reach your arms out nice and long. Let your palms be facing down, reaching out through the fingertips. And see if you can just let yourself, as you look out beyond, over the top of that left hand, just enjoy feeling the feet in the floor. 
Feel your toes all the way up into your hips. And then we'll turn the left palm up. Now, if you can, fold your right arm behind you. If that hurts your shoulder, don't do it. Put your right hand on your right leg back there. And inhale, reach up towards the sky. So let yourself feel that breath coming in again to expand the spaces between the left ribs. And then on your next exhale, we're gonna come into side angles. So your left hand or forearm can go on your thigh. Keep your right hand behind you for a second. Let the palm face outward if you can. And then find those two equal sides of the body here. And then go ahead and lay your right arm right down on the top of your right thigh. Your right hand is on the top of your right thigh. And then we're just gonna swing the right arm in front of our chest and bring it on up into line, if possible, with the right side of the body. And you know, be mindful. Take your time, feel both shoulders coming down away from your ears, even if you're using your shoulder, I mean your forearm or your hand onto that leg. And we're gonna come on back into warrior two. Press the feet away from each other as we come. Feel that core strength now. And then let your hands come down. We're gonna turn our feet as we face the long edge of our mat parallel for a second, but then turn your toes out a little bit so that you're turning out from up in your hips and let your knees bend a little bit into goddess. You don't have to go deep to be in goddess. You bend the knees a little bit and you're gonna feel your thighs, you're gonna feel your hips. Make sure you're not tucking your tailbone forward. Feel your tailbone dropping straight down. Sometimes it helps to put your right hand on your belly and your left hand back behind you on your sacrum so you can tell if you're tilting, right? You don't wanna tuck under, but you don't wanna tilt either with the pelvis, drop straight down. Good, and then release the hands, start to rise the arms straight out from the shoulders and bend your elbows to 90 degrees with your palms facing forward. So there you are in your goddess pose. Now, if you want, you can move a little bit. Inhale up, so you come up a little taller and then exhale, bend your knees a little again. So if you move a little, sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. So if you need to just stay, stay. But if you like that little bit of movement, inhaling up, exhaling back down, do. And then finish off back in your goddess for one more breath. Really spread those fingers nice and wide. And then we'll release our arms down. We're gonna straighten out so we can turn our feet now more parallel and grab your blocks if you need as you come on forward into your wide-legged forward bend. So take your time. Let your blocks or your hands be out in front of you so your back is a little bit longer. And then bend a knee at a time, but real be easy. No, if it bothers your knees, don't do it. Coming into those inner thighs, but letting the back feel pretty long here. Good, and then come on back into center. Let both knees bend a little bit. And walk your hands or your blocks out a little further if you can. Almost like you're coming in towards like a down dog. And you can separate your hands a little wider than you do in dogs if that feels better for your shoulders. Let your heart melt down a little bit towards the ground. And again, knees can be a little bent here. Just let yourself release to where you can. Good, and then walk the hands or the blocks on back underneath you and you decide if you need to use some blocks for support underneath your forearms or your head or your hands. Or some of you may wanna walk your hands back more towards between your feet and hang with the crown of the head releasing down without support under your forearms. So be where you can and breathe. Really accepting those full deep breaths in and out. Good, one more breath. And as we start to rise up, you know, you take your time to do that. If you need to bring your feet together before you come up, do, or a little bit closer together even, and then walk around. Move through your feet and your ankles if you need to. Press into the tops of the toes or lift your feet up and circle them around a little bit. And we're going to go to the other side. So left foot's going to step back. Again, you get used to, especially if you take yoga quite often, right, you, you get used to your stance and how long it is. So. 
Maybe you want to try a little shorter. Maybe you want to try a little longer. That front knee still is not going to be bent out beyond your toes, so you have to adjust. And then rise the arms on up and out and bring your gaze out over the top of that right hand. And you know if your shoulders ever bother you, you can just keep your hands down and be in a warrior. Either arm can stay down or both arms can stay down. Let yourself feel the feet in the floor. Feel as balanced as you can between your right and your left side. Even though you're different, right? Asymmetrical. We're going to bring the left hand down and fold the arm underneath behind you if you can. And then turn that right palm up and inhale, reach up. Nice inhale into the right side. So enjoy feeling the ribs expand as you inhale. And then as you exhale this next time, coming into side angle. So if you can, keep the left hand behind you for a second. Find how low you want to go. Remember, you don't have to go low. You can keep your hand up above your knee. You can let yourself come to your forearm. And then lie the left arm just right down on the left side of your body. So the arm just really just lies there, released. Now when you get ready to swing this arm in front of your chest, see if it can be real easy to get it up into line with the left side of the body. If it's not, don't do it. Turn the pinky down a little bit. Feel space between your ears and your shoulders. Finding your extended side angle here. One more breath. And then we're going to come on back into warrior two. Pressing the feet away from each other as we come. And lowering arms down. We're going to turn our feet. Again, at first a little more parallel. So you get the kind of length of the, how the stance, how wide you want it. And then turn your toes out so you can bend your knees out over the center of your feet into your goddess. And this time we'll do a little side stretch here. So bring your hands down to your thighs. Let your right arm rise up overhead. And so your knees are bent here. Now when you come over to the left a little bit, you're not changing from the waist down. Right? So you're just coming into a little side stretch. You're staying just solid from the waist down. And then we'll come on back up to the top, lower that right arm down, and we'll inhale the left arm up. And again, it's just the upper body that's coming into this side stretch. You try not to do anything with your legs or your hips don't become unlevel, right? Good. One more breath. And then we'll come on up. We're going to lower the arms down. Come into your goddess arms one more time. And now as you exhale, bring your hands, your forearms, and your elbows towards each other in front of you, like you're closing a book, and then inhale as you open back up. So again, exhaling, bring in the hands, arms, forearms, more in, and then inhale, open back. And then one more time, exhaling, closing here, up into center, and then inhale and open back. We're gonna come into straighter legs, thank goodness, and turn our toes forward. And we're going to come on forward into that wide-legged forward bend. So again, grab your blocks if you need them. Take your time. Bend whatever you need to. Both knees or one knee at a time. Just move however feels good. Adjust your stance if you need to. Remember, we're attempting to be fairly parallel with our feet. Arches are lifting up. Four corners of the feet into the floor. And let's walk over towards the right or shift your block to the right as far as you want to go. And just stay there for a couple of breaths. And then we'll come on back through center and we're going to go to the left. Again, you can shift your block to the left. You can go over towards your foot. Stay for a couple of breaths. Give your body time to adjust. where you can so you can just allow the upper body to release using whatever support you need and then accept your breaths see if you can find those little spaces between your breaths so when you inhale really find that little pause it's not like you're holding your breath but you feel that little space before you exhale and the same thing at the end of your exhale there's that little space where you're neither inhaling or exhaling. Good. One more breath. And now again, to 
rise up. Take your time. Use your hands on your thighs or let yourself bring your feet more together first if you come up. And if you're dizzy, be really mindful of that too. And then move through your feet and your ankles again. We're going to come in to either turn your chair around where the seat is facing you or have both your blocks handy at the front of your mat and we'll step forward to have our hands supported by something. Maybe it's the chair, maybe it's the block's highest height. And we're going to step our right foot back and come in to lunge. So let that feel good. Let your legs stretch out a little bit there in your lunge. And then from here, keeping the hands grounded here, we're going to come into that right foot lowering down for pyramid pose. So the heel comes down to the floor now. So as far as you need to adjust inward with that leg to get the heel hiked in just slightly, but down on the floor into pyramid. Lengthen out through the torso here now. So think about if you can, finding a nice flat back. Imagine your tailbone, instead of like for a second, feel like you're curling your tailbone down a little bit. You feel that? And then try to reach back with your tailbone and feel the difference in what your pelvis does, right? So now you've got this flatness right there at the low back, maybe even that little bit of natural curve in your low back. And then from there, bring your left hand up to your left hip and start to rotate that left shoulder up, coming into revolve triangle. So again, reach back through the tailbone, feel the thighs engaging upward like you're making space in your knees. One more breath, and then we'll release the hand back down. Now, if you want to fold over the leg this time, go for it. If it feels really good to bow forward over that leg, you can let yourself release. And then we're going to come back enough to bend the front knee just so we can step forward with the right foot underneath us, and we're going to step the left foot right away back into lunge. So find your lunge for a second, because that'll be a good stretch after that pyramid. And then we're going to come into that pyramid pose on this side. So the left foot comes in and up to be fully on the floor. Heel is down. Foot is turned out slightly, so you have like a 20 or 30 degree turnout. And now use your blocks, the height, so that you can feel that length of your spine, right? If you're really finding a flat back, engage your belly, reach your tailbone back a little bit. And it's almost like you're kind of imagining that your heart is melting down towards the ground. So you're getting some natural curve back into your back. Good. Of course, the backs of the legs are talking to you. Feel your thighs engaging upward. And then let your left hand stay where it is. Bring your right hand to your right hip and start to just rotate up from here. So remember, thighs are lifting up. Releasing out through the top of the head, trying to stay as level as you can there at your hips. Good. One more breath. And then we'll come on back down. Now, again, if you like to bend your elbows and fold over that leg, you can. That is up to you. If it doesn't feel good, don't do it. One more breath. And then we're going to bend that front knee. We're going to step forward and get our feet now right underneath us. Take your time. Come into a standing forward bend. If you need to put some support underneath your hands or your forearms, do it. Equalize out between your feet here. And then bring yourself into pressing equally into your feet as you bring your hands to your hips and rise up to standing. And we'll inhale the arms all the way out and up. And on our exhale, let our hands come down together in front of our hearts. Finding your mountain pose now. Feeling that lightness in your head. And again, if you can imagine you're standing in the middle of a really big, empty, open field where there's just like the space around you is very open, but almost like you're a part of the space around you. Release through your face and your jaw. And then we'll 
we'll go ahead and let our arms come on down. Shake out a little bit, yay. So we're gonna come to the wall with our mats here. So um, take your time, let yourself um, bring your mat in. If you're at home, if you just get a little bit of space at the wall, that would be good. Uh, you don't need a lot, and you may not want to use it at all, but if you do want to use the wall, we're going to do a little half moon pose. If you do want to use a wall behind you, you need a little more space where your body can stretch out, but you can also just put your foot in the wall. So I'll demonstrate with your back to the wall first for half moon, where you put your, let's do right hand down onto a block, highest height underneath your shoulder, you're standing on your right foot, which is parallel to the wall, okay? And then you can let yourself just open up so that you look outward here. You can bring your left arm up if you choose, or you can keep your hand down on your hip. So be really mindful of your neck here. If your neck feels really uncomfortable to look forward, then look down, try looking down. Some of you might though even think about wanting to look up towards the ceiling when you, if you have the back wall behind you. Everybody in here is at a wall. If you're at home and you want to put your foot in the wall, you can do that, right? So take your time, let yourself be easy and mindful in your half moon here. Good. And then we're going to release and come down. Nice, nice. We're going to switch and go to the other side. So again, left hand is underneath your shoulder so that when you reach down to get it, it's pretty easy. If you need to be on a fist on the block, by all means do, right? So if your wrist bothers you, you want to go to a fist, do. And then as you flex through that back foot, the toes are slightly facing down. And again, you can decide whether you want to lift that top arm up, whether you want to look out, look down, or even try to play with looking up. You have the wall back there. If you'd like to put your head on the wall and try to look up, and actually, if you're like me and sometimes you have trouble doing that with your neck, it actually feels kind of good some days. So just enjoy coming into your half moon here. Good. One more breath. And then we're going to slowly come on back up. Take your time to come on up. And now turn and face the wall. And let yourself just step back. Whether you do fist in this plank, we're going to come into a plank, or maybe you want to spread your fingers nice and wide. We're going to do a few little push-ups, right? But be mindful. You know, don't feel like you have to go all the way like you're going to count and go really fast. Instead, go really slowly in towards the wall, even if you just barely bend your elbows. And feel like you're holding a beach ball between your elbows and you keep it there as you come in towards the wall and as you come away. And also feel your sitting bones reaching down towards your heels. And there's this engagement in your low belly that stays throughout, right? Good, nice. if you can and do two more of these at your own pace and so that when you do finish the last one you shift back and walk your hands down and come into like a down dog here at the wall to stretch your triceps out a little bit stretch out the backs of your legs elbows can hug inward a little bit here you can be up higher you don't have to be totally 90 degrees at the hips that's up to you Knees can be bent, knees can be straight, but try to have your feet right underneath you so that you really are like that capital letter L, 90 degrees at the hips. Good. One more breath. And then let yourself walk on back in towards the wall and let your arms swing a little bit forward and back and come away from the wall obviously so you don't hit. You can let yourself then bend your elbows once and then let the arms swing back straight. And you can let your knees bend too when you're doing this if you want. You know, if it feels good, letting the knees bend a little bit, getting down. 
and letting the arms release. Good. And then see if you can just swing your arms so they come in front and make an X and then you switch the arm that's on top. So just let them release there. Good. Good. And we are going to make our way down onto the floor from here. So if you know you want to sit up on a block, I mean on a blanket or a blanket and a block, go right ahead and do it because we're, we're going to come into a little bit of forward bend, a little bit of hip opening here. So sitting on a blanket if you need. We don't need our straps yet, but don't get too far away from them so when we come down you'll have them. And then we're going to cross. Now this is optional whether you cross left ankle kind of above or below your right knee. Or some of you might want to send the right foot more to the midline and fold, actually fold your leg more so the thighs are close together like this. This is not in everybody's body hips to do that. So you be where you can. Let yourself feel the heel of that right foot on the floor and think about coming forward here. So as you do, you know, and it might be like an inch, right? Some of you might feel really good to reach down towards your foot coming into opening up through the back of the leg. And take your time here. Just breathe, coming into this forward bend. Now, to add a little twist here, since you are forward, let your left hand come like towards the outside of your right leg somewhere, or your ankle or your foot, and then bring your right hand to your right hip and let yourself come into an easy twist there. So you'll feel pretty good in the outside of that right leg there, maybe, or the back of it, both. Good. Nice, one more breath. And then come on back into center, and we're gonna rise on back up, and we're gonna switch legs. So either that figure four, or towards this half cow face is called if you thigh if you do thigh over thigh and you have that left heel on the floor whichever one of these you're doing it draws back towards you you're engaged in that bottom leg as you come forward so again how far you come forward that is totally up to you good coming forward from the low back and letting yourself good nice and then just breathe, bring your breath to where you need it. So depending on whether you're feeling a hip, sort of like oh, talking to you or the back of your leg or the outside of your leg, just imagine bringing your breath there to help you. Good, and then bring the right hand somewhere on the outside of that long leg, left leg, and left hand to the left hip, and come on into that twist there. So again, you're a little bit forward or maybe a lot forward, depends on you. Good, let yourself breathe. Really good IT band stretch here, one more breath. slowly come on back and bring yourself on back up. Stretch your legs out for a second. Move through your feet a little bit. And then bend your knees and let yourself, now you can if you want, just put your hands behind you. You can turn them out like 45 degrees and draw your chest forward here. You don't have to lift up into a four-footed table, right? So if you like to lift up, hands can be turned either direction under your shoulders, either fingertips facing towards your feet, or you can do that little turnout with the, the fingers facing more back towards the wall behind you. But, you know, everybody's different, and once you decide you want to lift up and try it, your shoulders will pretty much tell you if you're in a place where you can do it, right? So you just adjust. Good. So most everybody has their hands turned backwards. Good, come on down. Turn your hands the other way. And then, we're gonna come on around onto our backs on the floor. So just, I, I'm gonna just say to you, so since most of you did have your hands turned this way, just over time, see what happens sometimes. Like, I don't know, in a few weeks from now, whatever, 
See if, if you lift up like this, it feels any different up into your shoulders, right? Um, it took me a long time, but now this is the way that I prefer to come up, and which is pretty astounding because I couldn't do it at all for a long time. So just see how, I mean, just be aware of how your shoulders might change, right? So we're going to come to our backs, but grab your, uh, what do you call it, strap, <laughs> and have it right there because we're going to use it. Bring your knees on into your chest, and we kind of got our legs ready, hopefully, for this, so it'll be a little easier to get deeper here on these strap stretches, but let your knees come side to side. Just be mindful. And then get your strap, and we're going to bring the strap onto both feet, across the balls of both feet, and send them up in the air. So let yourself, you know, get easy. You can bend your knees, of course. If your legs need to come away from you, of course, let them come away from you. If it feels good to have your feet right up there above your hips, do that. And then just kind of feel the weight of your arms. So you're holding the strap in a way where you don't feel like you're so tense. I mean, if it be it's better to wrap your hands around, wrap your strap around your hands like that, you can. If that feels even better in your hands. Because I know sometimes our hands just start to get really tense. Now from here, we're gonna slowly bring our left foot out of the strap. Now, when you start to lower it down, be real slow and pay attention to what your back does, right? So when your feet were up there, your low back was probably pretty much into the floor. As you start to lower the left leg, you're gonna feel a little bit of space come there between in your lower back and in, in that and the floor. That's your natural curve, let it happen. Now, once you get down with that left leg, bend your right knee a little more. And when you decide to try to come into a straighter leg, don't, don't try to pull the leg in towards you. Just let the weight of your arms help you find your release. It's not about how close you get your leg into you. So press gently into that strap with the ball of your foot, but make sure you're not rolling on the foot to the inside or the outside of your foot. Just breathe. Let it feel really releasing, allowing the back of the leg to open up. And now take both ends of the strap into your right hand. Put your left hand down on the top of your left hip and open your leg to the right. Now maybe just a little bit. You want to stay grounded in that left side. You can open as far over as feels good. Press into the strap with the ball of your foot. So you're engaging as you're coming into that inner thigh. And then bring the leg back up to the top. Switch hands. Left hand comes over to get the straps. And let your right arm come out beside you. Now, you can come over just a little bit. If you let your left hand pull a little to the left and press the outside of your right foot back into the strap, you're gonna get right into that stretch where we stretched when we were sitting on the floor, right? And did that twist. You can go deeper if you want into the twist. That's totally up to you. If you wanna let the leg come over farther or not, just be mindful. We're going to slowly bring the foot back up, leg back up. Now, bend that knee a little bit, bring your left foot up and put it in the strap again. So both feet are back up there if you can. Again, adjust where you need to be. Feel the weight of your arms. Try not to overdo. Let the shoulders release down. And then the right foot comes out of the strap. And again, slowly, really paying attention to what your back does. So your belly's engaged, but even with your belly engaged, as the foot lowers, you get that bit of a natural curve, and it's different for all of us. It's the way you're built, but there's a little curve in your low back, right? And you wanna keep that. We're not trying to flatten that out of our backs at all. And then again, try to find a way to hold your strap. Focus on pressing gently into the ball of the foot on the strap.
and then releasing into your breath. Again, feeling the weight of your arms. Sometimes after a couple of breaths, your leg kind of gives up a little bit in a way and it feels easier to let the leg just come a little closer to you. So one more breath here. And then both ends of the strap into your left hand. Right hand comes to sit on top of the right hip there, the hip pointer, and then open to the left with the leg. So really stay grounded in that right side so you're not letting your right hip pop up off the floor. And press into the strap a little bit with the ball of the foot. Come back up to the top and let your right hand come on over to get the straps here. Stretch your left arm out beside you. Go just a little bit to the right so that you're not far. And now let your right hand pull the strap like you're trying to pull over to the side a little bit more, but the foot presses back into the strap. And that really engages deeply in the outside of your leg. And then, of course, if you're like, I can't wait to get out of that and go further into that twist, you can go whenever you want. You can go farther or not. Take your time. Let yourself enjoy. Good. Feel the strap still with the ball of the foot if you can. One more breath. And then we'll come on back up again. And let's put both feet on back up. Let yourself just bend your knees quite a bit for a second. Really just enjoy letting the low back come onto the floor for a second. Good, and then go ahead and come back uh, into opening the legs out to the side so the legs come longer. And you can go as far wide as you want on this strap, right? You can go two feet, you can go three feet, you can go all the way to hold the ends of your strap if you want. So take your time, just allow yourself to enjoy. If you want a little bit more, if you're in your wide angle here and you wanna send your tailbone down a little bit and pull like you're drawing the strap towards you, Man, that will really get a little deeper into the, the thigh, inner thighs and your hamstrings, too. Good. Now, be easy when you start to release on up. We're going to take the strap off, so just be careful that you do not bang the strap into your head, that metal end, because people have been known to do that, and bring your knees in. If you feel like you want to curl up into a little ball or maybe a little happy baby pose sounds like a good idea to some of you. Or even soles of the feet towards each other coming into your body, Kanasana. Listen to your body. You know, it doesn't have to be a traditional yoga pose that you do right now. You may decide you want to just take a little walk on the ceiling or do a little bicycle. There could be any number of things actually that sound good right now. Bridge pose even. If you want to do a little bit of a bridge if there's something else that sounds good by all means take your time to do it start to get some lights, walk around to get those, and then I'll get bolsters for anybody who needs them here in the studio. If you're home and you know you need some support, then use what you have at hand, right? I mean, even a towel or a blanket rolled up for underneath your knees can help that little bit of an angle with the pelvis change so that you can release your back easier. That works for a lot of people. It doesn't work for everybody. And the other thing is to be really comfortable with the back of your head. 
lime if you need on a little bit of a blanket so that you don't have your chin <laughs> lifting and the back of your neck shortening, right? Instead, you want to feel length in the back of your neck and the throat. And you also want your arms and your legs to be at a comfortable place. So remember, if you need anything, you know, to be cleaning it and sanitizing it after. So if anybody's kind of chilly and you want a blanket to cover up with, don't be shy. Wave at me and let me know so that you can be able to release, be comfortable and easy for your Shavasana. Let your arms and your legs kind of feel a little bit, a little bit weighted, just so that you can allow that release to happen up into your shoulders and your hips. And letting yourself watch your breath coming in and going out. So just accepting those breaths easily in and out. If it's calming for you to bring your awareness for a bit to those little spaces between your breaths. Sometimes if you imagine relaxing in those little spaces between your breaths, <coughs> you can find that quiet place. Give yourself the gift, really, of these few minutes, giving your mind and your body time to benefit from all you just did. Let yourself completely and fully relax.
imagine sending your exhales all the way out to the tips of your fingers and your toes, almost like you're sending the breath into your extremities. And letting yourself, when you're ready, wiggle your fingers and your toes a little bit, coming into your hands and your feet. You might even want to circle around through your wrists, your ankles a little bit as you come up into the arms and the legs, doing what you need to do, stretching or bending. And you know, you can stay there on your back. You're more than welcome to roll to either your right or your left side if you're comfortable to do that. You can let your knees be soft and come into a fetal position on your side. And if it helps to use your arm as a pillow if you're on your side, you can just to give the body and the brain a little bit of time to adjust there. And then of course, when you're ready to rise up, let it feel pretty easy to bring yourself into a comfortable seated position, whether it's stretching your legs out or crossing your legs using support underneath yourself. If you want to grab a blanket or bolster and sit up on it, let your hips be comfortable. And just let your eyes close and enjoy feeling that sense of, again, reaching upward through the top of your head. And come back to your breath, following your breaths in and out. On your next exhale, gently allow your hands to meet right there in front of your chest. And wishing each one of you a very joyful day. Namaste. Namaste. Happy Thursday.